not. We've seen that loops allow us to do things multiple times. They allow us to repeat things. There's an analogy when we want to store data. If I've got to store a, a, an audio file and it's got 10,000 samples, I don't want to create variables, you know, sample 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, sample 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, and so forth. It would be a lot of typing. Instead, what I can do is something like this. There's an audio sample, bit of a Doppler to it. Okay, open a square bracket. <coughs> I just created a list of values. You want to store a list in Python? Square bracket, value comma, value comma, value comma, da 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 da, close the square bracket. They can be any length you want up to the amount of memory you've got on your machine. Okay, here I've stored a list of five numbers. I could equally well store a list um, and say composers equals, I'm going to go for Bach, Beethoven, uh, Brahms, don't actually like Brahms, and Duke Ellington. Okay. I could even do this. I can even do data equals first three, last 22. In a language like Java or C++, when you're building lists, the language, or arrays, the language really wants them to be homogeneous. Same type of data in each slot. Yes, you can get around that, but that's what the language wants you to do. In Python, as in Ruby, IDL, MATLAB. When you're doing this, they can be heterogeneous. You can store a mixture of strings, integers, anything that you could assign to a variable, you can stuff into a list. Okay. Generally, this is not a great idea. If I write a loop and go back and add one to each element of this list, that loop's going to be hard to write because I've got to say, okay, I want to add one, but if you're a string, I need to do it this way, and if you're an integer, I need to do it that way. Generally speaking, people will put homogeneous data into structures because it's just easier to work with that way. If you've got a bunch of names and a bunch of birth dates, storing them as name, birth date, name, birth date, name, birth date is probably going to be harder to work with in your program than having one list of names and one list of birth dates or something else that we'll come back to in a couple of minutes. Okay? So generally, a, a, a well-formed list actually has the same types for each value. There are exceptions to this rule, but that's... If you see mixed data types, <coughs> that's code you want to look at very carefully for bugs. Excuse me. Everybody okay with this so far? This is how I store multiple values. Okay. If I want to get one of those values, I can now say data of, well, data of one. What's in slot number one in that list? And the answer is three. Because Python counts from zero. That's location zero, location one, location two, location three. Right? And anybody who lives in this country cannot complain about that. Because when reception told me your classroom is on the first floor, I spent a lot of time one floor below us. Sorry, they said it was on the second floor. Right? For me, ground floor is floor one. One flight of stairs is floor two. Here, floors count from zero. Right? In, the, in, in England, first floor is one flight of stairs up. It actually makes more sense. Right? So in Python, that is location zero, that's location one, that's location two, and that's location three. Everybody okay with that? So if the length of the thing is four... The legal indices are 0, 1, 2, 3. It's 0 up to, but not including the length of the list. Everybody okay with that? Okay. If I want to change a value, I just assign to it as if it were a variable. So data at location 1 is assigned the value 3. And now it's first 3, last 22, instead of first... Number three, last 22. 
Okay, let me scroll that up a bit so that people can see. Okay, if I want to get a value, I just treat it like I would any variable. That's just a variable name that's got two parts. That's the structure and that's the element in the structure. Okay? Well, knowing, knowing that, um, counter, well, let's call it index. Index equals zero. While index less than four, print data at index. Index plus equals one. Okay. Index is zero, it's less than four, so I print data at index zero. Index one, index two, index three. Four is not less than four, four is equal to four, so I drop out the first three, last 22. It's just printed out the values. So I've got a way to sweep through the, the elements of a list. You'll do this a lot. Here's my audio sample, yeah. 15,000 samples over a five second period, right? So I just say, for I equals zero, I less than 15,000, ding, 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 and do something with each of the samples. Of course, this won't work if I've only got three elements in the list. Let's try this. Index equals zero, while index less than 40, print data at index. Kaboom. Zero, one, two, three, and it does exactly what it would do if I try to get the value of the variable planet when I haven't defined a variable called planet. It says there is no element number four, or five, or six, or seven, or anything else. There's only elements zero, one, two, and three. It's not going to guess the value. It's going to say, you haven't put value in, I can't give you data back. Okay? Exactly as it does. If I say print planet, it says there's nothing there. I can't do this for you. Okay? Again, some languages will fill in with zeros. They'll automatically extend. If I ask for element 100 out of a list, it says, well, you must want there to be at least 100 elements. I'll just pad the data with zeros and give you one of those back. Python doesn't do that. Everybody okay so far? Here's a cleaner way to do what I just did. Do you want me to bring this up a bit so it's mid-screen rather than bottom of the screen? Can you see this clearly from the back? Okay. Let's take a look at my data again. Okay. I'm going to say index equals zero. While index less than len of data, print data at index, and move on to the next one. This is better than saying, well, index less than four. Why? Two reasons. Give me one. If I decide to make this 20 elements long, I don't have to change anything else in my code. I don't have to find all of the places where I had the magic number four and say, right, that four is supposed to be a 20. <laughs> because, of course, what will happen is I'll miss some of them, and then I'll mistakenly change other fours to 20s when they were supposed to be left to be fours because they were doing something else. Here, I go and ask the data, how long are you? And that controls the loop. Okay. Everybody okay with that? If I've got the number four there, what I'm really doing is repeating information. I've got four elements here, and the list knows how long it is, and then I'm repeating that information down here. You want to get rid of repetition in programs. If I've got a list of four elements and also the magic number four right here, that's the same information in two places, and eventually it will be wrong in one or the other. If you're building data structures like lists, always ask them, how long are you? Am I done yet? Don't wire that information in someplace else in the program and trust it to be consistent, because eventually it won't be. What's the other reason this is better than having the number four? Um, because I'm pretty sure it won't fail there. You're pretty sure you won't fail, right? That'll keep it in bounds. It's also signaling to the human reader what this loop is doing, right? <coughs> if you're reading this code, there's three pages of code. Up here, I created the array data, the list of data, right? It happened to have four elements. And down here, I'm saying, well, index less than four, you might go four. Is that an averaging window? Is that a, is that a, I don't know what it's for. I don't know why four. 
Whereas if I say, well, index less than data, I think it's pretty clear to anybody reading the code that it's, oh, your index starts at zero, and while it's less than the length, we're going through every element. So again, for the benefit of the human reader, this signals what the purpose of the code is. Okay? While index less than four, uh -huh. if data is 100 elements, clearly that's not sweeping over all of the elements. So four is some sort of a window, like we're doing sliding averages or something to smooth the data. Whereas if I say index equals zero, well, index is less than length of data, you can be pretty sure that the index is going to step through the entire array one by one. Here's the downside. If in here I'm not actually incrementing index by one each time, if in fact, for example, I'm striding through every odd element or looking at every element that isn't after an element with negative value or something like that, this could mislead the reader. Looking at those two lines, you'd think, oh, the index is going to go through all of the legal indices. We're going to sweep through all the elements. And if the loop is actually doing something else, now I'm giving you the wrong impression, steering your mind in the wrong direction. Bad idea. So let me show you a way to clean this up. For value in data, print value. Almost every language has a for loop. Most of them ignore what we know about real programs. Again, going back to the usability work done in the early 1980s in Amsterdam, programs that have been analyzed since then, depending on your domain, wide error bars, blah, blah, difficult to generalize, but in general, about three quarters of the time when you're looping over something like a list, you don't care about the index. You only care about the values. The only reason you are looping over the indices is so that you can get the corresponding value. You don't care here whether the index is 0, 1, 2, 3, you just want the values in order as you go through the collection. So that's what a for loop in Python does. And other languages like Java have now imitated this. Here, that is not 0, 1, 2, 3. That is zeroth element, first element, second element, third element. It gives me back the values out of the collection one at a time in order. Because three quarters of the time, roughly error bars, mumble, mumble, that's what you actually want. Okay. This is what you will see in Python programs most of the time. Here's my audio samples. For value in sample do, you know, truncated if it's less than zero or greater than some threshold, right? Truncated to lie within range. I don't care whether it's sample number 50 or sample number 500. I just want to truncate it to be within range. 